Hey there, Rulerners, DMO73 here, and we're going on a trip on a road to the sacred number. Let's go ahead and jump right in with Helen Witches. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to pre-order upcoming Force of Will sets, ccgprimes.com for singles and supplies, cardodoco.com for those rulers in the international market looking for product, the Ruler School Circuit Series, now taking orders on our quarter three 2024 circuit kits, and our guest lecturer members, Fight Ramen. Class is in session. Ta-da! So here is the deck. Just as a reminder, you can go ahead and get signed up for our event that we're doing tomorrow, the Discord event for the Ruler School Circuit. You should definitely get signed up for that. But we have math. It's time to do math. We are trying to road to the sacred number, our opponent, Talithal, by setting ourselves to 200 life at the end of our turn. This is actually surprisingly easy to do. Um, you just have to kind of watch out for two main cards in this format being one, burn. In general, burn is going to be a difficult matchup for this deck uh, to try to go for the alt-win condition, though you certainly don't need to go there. And the other one being um, is Misty Statue, uh, the one that rests. Uh, and if your ruler is a, J, a water ruler with judgment it sets their defense to zero because you need this lady to survive she has eternal but that thing gets around eternal so you want to kind of watch out for that this rune counter ability we don't have the ability to use yet but once that happens i think this actually will be a lot better because then we can kind of ignore bird a little bit more which gives us some cool options for this deck so the witch package we're playing four witch of the tower number four two number five two number six two number nine and four number 12. um we want to just be setting these up for exploration like you saw before in the feature match you can see that in response to their enter effects oftentimes you're doing uh revealing the bottom card of the deck so you can guarantee a light card and then whatever you don't hit off of the explorer then tucks to become the next light card that you will stack under them and that goes for the witches across the board i don't typically use the tap trinity effects very often although it does sometimes come up in grindy matchups but stacking cards underneath them is very good for insatiable desire for knowledge one thing i've seen a lot with this deck that i've been playing it is that you do have these situations where you just have a big board of pressure after recovery swing in force your opponent to burn resources and then once they've done so then you just flip and alt resource them there um so you kind of use the witches to kind of as magnets for spot removal or interaction because they're pressuring for so much damage and then that gives you a free option to do road the sacred number uh, we're also playing a couple copies obviously four copies of remnants of the ruin to max that out three copies of ivory tower to be able to double explore which is very helpful the stat pump is kind of uh, okay but it's really the double explore ability which is nice a single copy of witch of the fallen kingdom and witch of quenched fire which is very nice off of remnants of the ruins and again burn is good I personally am playing a couple copies of Proto Protopolis. You don't really have to. I just like the idea of instant speed spot removal. This is also really good to be able to hit things like Sphinx. Uh, so just something to kind of keep in mind. A couple copies of Wise Dragon also because it's very easy to get to five treasures removed thanks to Helen. Uh, and this card is just free and then, you know, puts out a lot of work. And being different attack and defense is surprisingly relevant in this format. And then three copies of Mirror, uh, four copies of Kiki Celeste's partner, and then three copies of Secret Duel in the Moonlight. You probably could play four or maybe should play four Secret Duels just to see it more often, but I only had three uh, readily available, so I've been testing it out with three. Stone base wise, two Heat Rays, four Moon Shades, two Water Moon Fragments, an Emerald uh, Tablet, and then a Fool's Gold. Uh, so those are pretty good. And then just some things to consider for this deck. Um, if you're talking about a ruler heavy meta that has a lot of um, water rulers with judgment, beginning of a fairy tale would be a good option because you can respond to judgment by casting beginning of a fairy tale awakened you don't even need this card to resolve you're just trying to make it so that root to the sacred number enters play tapped so that it doesn't matter if they have stone statue because misty dragon statue has to actually rest the j ruler to be able to set its stats to zero so if you're going in for the lethal line and you do that she'll be rested so they can't actually set her to zero so it's a nice way to dodge it and then i talked about this before improved healing robot would be a great card as well to consider in this deck for if you 
get messed up in trying to go for the line. We're like, oh, I've burnt, burned a bunch of my life, but I have a bunch of cards RFG'd, so let's reset and reset my life total and try again later. Uh, same with Lumia Princess of Rebirth. It's the same kind of thing. So just some things to consider for the deck. It is a lot of fun to play, surprisingly. Just a lot of fun, but you're going to be taking a lot of game state actions very quickly. And surprisingly, your mulligan matters a lot too, because you kind of get to use some advantage by guaranteeing a light card on the bottom of your deck through your mulligan, which can kind of be really helpful. So that is it for the list. Let me know how you guys have been playing Road to the Sacred Number in the comment section down below. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.